So hi, I'm uh, T.H. Cohane, a National Geographic Explorer from 2009, and I'm with my buddy Hans Wegner, who's leading the greening efforts for making National Geographic one of the greenest buildings in the United States. And one thing we've been talking about for a couple of years now is the role that food waste from the cafeteria turned into biogas and fertilizer can play in making our cities better. And I brought down, uh, this time, an inner tube filled with biogas from our cafeteria waste at Mercy College, where we gather our cafeteria waste and grind them up in a food grinder and then put them in our fermenting tanks on campus. And I carried this down on the bus, on the subway, and uh, down here to, to uh, D.C. And it's, of course, it's very clean, safe biogas. And there it is, uh, how hot, but clean, no smoke, no carbon monoxide. It can be used indoors to run generators or to run refrigerators or to cook with, and it won't generate anything toxic, just carbon dioxide and water vapor. And what I was showing here today is this power pot, which is a thermocouple device, a Peltier or Sibiac device that uses heat deferential. So one metal, it's a bimetal. If one side is made hot and the other side is kept cold by the water inside, then it generates an electric current. Sort of like the photovoltaic effect where light dislodges electrons from a semiconductor material. This is a bimetal that dislodges electrons when heat is applied to it. And in about 30 seconds, you'll see these LED lights go on. And we take these out in the field with us because when we're out in the field and we're cooking our tea or cooking our eggs, we need light at night to see. And there it goes. The light is now on, as you can see. I, if I can turn it to the camera better. And uh, it's also a USB, so you can charge your cell phone or your tablet when you're in the field using cooking flame. And what I love about the biogas solution is that we can carry inner tubes or plastic bags filled with biogas anywhere we want, and we can cook and generate electricity like this, and we're solving the food waste problem and the toilet waste problem because mm -hmm. we also use our toilet waste for this. Mm -hmm. I use my baby's diaper waste. And the idea that these former liabilities can be turned into assets, things right. that were killing us, literally causing things like bubonic plague because food waste attracted rats with their fleas into cities, or uh, cholera, typhoid, dysentery, all of these dreaded diseases that completely can be eliminated once people realize that all organic residuals are not waste, they're actually raw materials to, within 24 hours, make biogas, which can be used. And then the fertilizer that comes out is fantastic because that's how we grow the food. And you see the light, oops, this is water droplets on here. You can hear them, I'll put it on top. This thing, you like to, can I put it here? Yeah, okay. on the floor. Oh, I'll put it on. On the floor. On the floor. Okay. It should be okay on the floor. Okay. Uh, we're doing, uh, following Dixon Despomier's advice from Columbia University, where he talks about cities growing all their own food so we don't put a burden on the, uh, on the wilderness or on the countryside. And cities using aeroponics uh, and hydroponics can grow their food if they have a source of good, high-quality fertilizer. That's been the barrier. But now that we can turn the food waste and toilet waste into high-quality fertilizer through the biogas fermenter, that era is over. We can now say that cities can provide all of their food and more efficiently, and that way the countryside could go back to being a beautiful area filled with wildlife where people exist more or less in harmony with that wildlife without shipping all of the nutrients off to the city and causing a net depletion of the fertility of the countryside. So at Mercy College in New York, we're experimenting with tower gardens, and we have several that are, we're growing. And tower gardens can grow through aeroponics seven to 20 times more food per acre than horizontal agriculture. And they don't need any soil at all. So the age of having to fight over land, fighting for arable land, chopping down rainforests, trying to burn using Sweden agriculture and get nutrients back in the soil. That could effectively be over if people would use this. And we're hoping that together we can put uh, some biodigesters into the city at the small scale, taking care of all of the cafeteria garbage and then turning it into healthy salads for people right in the city itself. So I wanted to share that uh, every year that Hans and I get together and let me just turn the camera around for a second and you can say hi to our YouTube audience. Hello. Hello, hello, everybody. This is exciting stuff. And you've been leading this effort. Your cafeteria is one of the greenest in the city. Well, I hope so. They're getting there. We're making good progress. We've compost all our waste there, and so we have no... We, our goal is now to have zero waste to landfill, and uh, clearly that's going to... This is a part of that solution. That's fantastic. Well, let's yeah, hope yeah. that we can do that. <laughs>
Thanks a lot. So for Solar Cities, I'm T.H. Cohane at National Geographic once again and loving it.